All right, so uh, my name is Dave Smitty. I work at Intel. I've been at Intel for about a year. Uh, I joined in October of 2017, and about a month and a half later, I joined with the studios team. Um, and we did our first production then. Um, so Intel is this gigantic corporation. It's about 50 years old and $75 billion in revenue. Uh, inside of Intel Corporation is a venture capital arm, which is called uh, ICAP, or Intel Capital. And inside of Intel Capital is Intel Sports. And inside of Intel Sports, there's Intel Studios. Uh, and we're about 15 people uh, uh, right now working this full time. Uh, there's a smattering of other researchers who get involved from time to time um, who help us out and help us solve complex problems. Uh, inside of Intel Capital also is RealSense. Uh, and uh, many folks here are familiar with... <laughs> Hi, Mom. Uh, I'm feel familiar with uh, RealSense. Um, so quickly in the org history, uh, Intel Sports was formed through acquisitions. Uh, in 2016, there was this initiative to let's get involved in immersive and volumetric and VR seemed like a super awesome idea to get involved in. So the company acquired Replay Technologies, which is an Israeli uh, organization that was focusing on volumetric and sports. And then as well, they acquired a company called Vogue VR that was doing and is doing still a stereoscopic uh, virtual reality live sports broadcast. Uh, quickly brought those companies together, formed the organization. Uh, in 2017, we had something like 11 uh, venues worldwide that uh, Intel Sports supported with uh, large-scale volumetric capture. I think we're like 30-ish today, and that includes NFL, NBA, there's one, the Dodgers has a volumetric capture, and then a bunch of European soccer uh, venues have a volumetric capture, and that's all for 2D broadcast enhancement today. Um, in 2017, they thought, hey, this is, let's do something cool with cinema. Uh, one of the founders uh, at Replay Tech had always seen this as a vision to do something with cinema, entertainment, TV, video games, uh, and started thinking about building Intel Studios. So they spent part of the year doing site selection, traveling around the West Coast, uh, looking at very big spaces where we could put a studio, and found a soundstage on Manhattan Beach, Studio, uh, Manhattan Beach Studios, or Manhattan, Manhattan Beach Media Campus, down in Los Angeles, since that's a 25,000 square foot facility on the lot. There's 17 or 18 sound stages. James Cameron has three or four doing Avatar right now. Lucas is doing a Star Wars film. A bunch of really cool activities. So there's a lot of great facilities for us to be able to do live productions or uh, all kinds of productions there. Uh, we did our first production in the end of 2017. It was a Western production. I think if you've been following Intel Studios at all, you've probably seen the Western production. Uh, we formed the team early this year. It's when I joined. Uh, and we've been working on tech evolution. And essentially, we've took a stadium system, which is a 38 camera RGB mono system, dropped it into the studio and did a shoot with it and found out that it does not work really well for cinema for a whole bunch of reasons. Uh, and our approach to doing cinema was a very uh, interesting approach to take for our first one. It was a big challenge. Um, and since then, we've done about 15 productions, four of them are commercials. Uh, we'll have some of those coming out later this year and early next year. And then the rest have been uh, test productions and sort of test productions, fuel innovation, and testing and learning and developing our, our product set. Um, very uh, quickly, let's see. Uh, we have a capture system, we have a post-production system, and we have uh, a set of tools for creating. Uh, today, we have a 76 uh, 5K RGB uh, camera capture system set up uh, in our 10,000 square foot stage. Uh, we have a bunch of other camera positions. Uh, they're not connected today. Uh, we'll be growing this, and we can talk about camera counts and how important they are, how not important they are, but everything's mono RGB today. Um, we are looking at other kinds of capture systems, but uh, ultimately this is uh, what we're set up for now. Um, Post-produce is uh, uh, taking up a lot of our time this year, so we went from the sports system, which is set up for doing a live capture, of grabbing something really cool, so if a play happens, oh, that's awesome, get all those frames, uh, we'll post produce those, produce those, do the camera movements, hand them off to the director at Fox or at ESPN or something like that. And that all has to happen within like a minute or two. Uh, for us, we can have the luxury of spending a week or two or three or four post producing content and spend a lot of time working on having a more, much more complex uh, pipeline. Um, the calibration system that was set up originally is terrible. Uh, we have spent a lot of time uh, improving the calibration system. Uh, we were able to roll out uh, markers onto the stage, three-dimensional markers. We can hang them from the ceiling as well. Uh, and essentially, we spent a little bit of time in image processing, but not a lot. Segmentation, we've worked a lot on. Uh, we've been developing artificial intelligence and neural networks to help us uh, improve segmentation. Uh, we've been working with tools. I think Facebook published a tool for a MassGAR CNN, uh, so check that out if you want to build a, a really cool CNN, uh, CNN for segmentation. 
And then reconstruction, which is largely based on PMVS, uh, although we have a bunch of smattering of other components in there, like visual hole and so forth. Uh, in the midst of all this are humans. Uh, we have uh, pipeline uh, TDs that manage the pipeline process. Um, when we started this last year, we didn't have a render farm. We have a render farm now. Um, and we also use AI for things like uh, character segmentation, character identification, as well as uh, identifying skeletons. So right now we have it set up for about 16 points on XYZ uh, on the characters, and we've got the, direct, the for, uh, correct directions for hands and feet. Uh, and we'll be able to use that for interesting effects and uh, interesting um, uh, compression to deal with uh, temporal coherence issues. Uh, from all this, we like to generate a point cloud. Um, and from that, we can bring that into Unity, and we've developed some tools to bring that into Unity. Uh, we haven't had a lot of requests from the marketplace for Unreal as of yet. Uh, we've done some integration, but it just haven't uh, had a lot of demand for it. And we have uh, Houdini as well for various kinds of output, including 2D output, which is an important uh, target uh, destination for us. And we have some Houdini artists internally. So, um, so why do all of this? Uh, Storytelling is the main reason. We're obviously um, really heavily focused on technology and have a lot of interesting technologists working for us. Uh, but essentially, we want to give storytellers the capability to tell stories in a new way, with a new medium, with a new format. And I think uh, folks at Scatter are really working on some interesting aesthetic ideas. Uh, and we're very interested in sort of following our own path uh, along that format as well. Um, it's a big performance space. So it's about capturing multiple characters moving in space. Uh, characters standing is not really a good use of this large space we have. Uh, so many characters is where it's at for us. Um, and you know, volumetric, it's, you know, why do volumetric versus doing CG? Well, it looks authentically like a human performed. It looks like a human. Um, you can also do lots of really cool camera movements. Uh, you don't have to have any camera setups. We've been having some, I'd say, early conversations with a number of uh, folks in the cinema industry, large studios and small studios. And I think they're looking at this as sort of down the road as there's a, a big future for being able to walk into a large scale capture, uh, 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 capture dome, essentially, not have to do any camera setups, do all of your camera movements in post, drop in all your assets in post, and so on. And we don't think it's just for 3D, although we support AR and VR, and we have great examples of that. Uh, 2D is quite interesting uh, to us as well, and I think there's a lot of room for exploring what is volumetric look in 2D and how can you tell something that's uniquely volumetric in 2D in terms of the look and the feel and the style and a lot of the efficiency that you get. So essentially shoot once in a volumetric dome and get multiple uh, outputs, immersive or a traditional 2D. Okay, so I ran through all that stuff. Uh, if anyone has any questions about any of that afterwards, please let me know. Um, uh, walk through some examples of media. I'll start with the Western piece and then move into something with basketball. Um, we haven't shown too much of this, uh, but it was shot early in the year. So let's see, Western. Um, so for those of you who haven't seen this, uh, this is a shot uh, from outside the dome, looking in on the Western shoot. Uh, it's real dirt. <laughs> don't, don't do real dirt. <laughs> I, I mean, you can't, I, don't, I don't recommend it. We, uh, we spent like, we had uh, art, art students come in as interns and work on shifts, eight hour shifts for 24 hour days for six weeks. I think there was 13 of them <laughs> cleaning it up. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Don't put physical sets in front of your cameras. Um, another thing to learn. Uh, but it looks cool. Uh, so here's another, uh, let's see if I can play this. Display, yeah. So here's a single camera shot of this scene unfolding. This probably is the proscenium. Uh, I don't know if it is or it isn't. Uh, we did, uh, working with horses is great. I do recommend that. Um, and uh, we had a cool stunt. So it was 14 seconds of uh, essentially a video. I think last year we, we did, so 14 seconds of volumetric and it took us like 10 or 12 weeks to do. This is very experimental, like uh, Diego Perluski bless his heart, was like, let's just swing for the fences and go big. Uh, and we took on a big challenge, and we just had more and more people keep coming in to help us uh, to, to make this work. Um, but uh, we did 14 seconds. It took like eight or 10 weeks to do. It was a seven-figure number to actually produce this and integrate into a CES pres uh, presentation for our CEO. Um, we've just finishing a, 
It was, uh, I know, I know. Democratizing volumetric media, right? <laughs> Fuck yeah. So uh, we've just finished a production, um, shooting it. We're in post-production now. It'll be about four minutes of volumetric video. So we've, we're sort of increasing this uh, by 16-fold. Uh, and the cost will be in the low six figures. We're driving down our costs by a, some multiple that I won't say right now. Uh, but we've really made a lot of progress in terms of building our tools, being more efficient, uh, and so forth. Here's, uh, keep going with this uh, wonderful Western piece. Um, so here's what it looks like uh, as volumetric. You have you know, mesh, essentially, for the background. We have this cool feature where you can be the horse. <laughs> Uh, that's worth a million bucks, I think. <laughs> um, you can be the villain too, which is you know, a little more traditional view. Uh, they ride off into the sunset happily as the heroine rescues the, uh, the hero. And, uh, the West is saved, right? Right? Um, I'm going to show well, four minutes. Okay, so I'm going to skip over this next one because it's everyone's seen that. You can see it on YouTube. All right, so this was calibration circa 2017. Uh, I, I was digging through assets for this presentation. I wasn't uh, here for this part of the shoot. I joined shortly after the. I joined after the production. This is bonkers. Like, there's no like Z axis to look at. The cards are folded up. This is essentially how I think they do it in stadiums, in some where they actually find the line, the lines on the fields and so forth, and they use those as markers and. That's kind of useful, uh, but it was terrible. Uh, we've, uh, um, it, we've moved, moved quite a long, far ahead, so let's see if I can play this quickly. Um, so this gives you a sense of size of the dome that we operate within. This is a half-court professional basketball court, so it's a real, real uh, professional uh, backboard. We bought it, and uh, we said, hey, we, it has to be very, very matte finished court. And they said, oh, it's ultra matte, don't worry. And it arrived, and we ended up sanding it and then repainting it um, because it wasn't matte. Uh, anyway, we, so we have these great markers that are floating around. They can be raised and rose by, pol by pulleys. We have our remote controls. All these cool things you get to do. Um, or at least the ops guys get to do. So uh, we found that green screen actually provides a lot of green splash. And we end up having to clean that up in post. So we painted it white. It's not going to be like, well, it might be like snow blind white soon. Because we're going to think we're going to take all the green out as well and make that white background. Um, so we did a 38 camera basketball shoot. Back in March, uh, we had a couple of athletes come in. The guy in red actually works for Intel. The guy in blue is a player for the Washington Generals, I think that is. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, those of you who know, follow professional basketball, know the Washington Generals, right? He's <laughs> laughing. You know, like, you know who this is. Uh, so um, I'm going to skip ahead. Let's see how this thing work. I don't really like Windows machines. Um, so, uh, so this is the old segmentation on the left. I mean, I, I like, you know, anyway, this is the old segmentation. Uh, you can see, if you look closely, it, there's a lot of holes, there's a lot of rough edges. This is what's basically part of the pipeline for the sport circa 17. Uh, and we made a lot of modifications. I won't go into the details of what those are. Um, see if I can get this one to play. And uh, this one, much smoother, more definition, clarity in the, in the you can see the wrinkles and so forth. Uh, no holes are missing, and so on. Uh, and we ended up with a 2D production we did in-house. And there's maybe some audio. There might be some audio. It's imagine audio. So we're intermixing 2D with volumetric 2D. I think if, if I if 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 my one success at Intel is getting rid of this damn wraparound shot, I think it'll be something I'll be very happy with. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I I know if you're watching me from your car, Diego, I, I apologize for saying that. I know you love it. It's 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 very exciting. So uh, and then we've. Um, <laughs> We've uh, recently done some work with uh, um, Looking Glass. Uh, we've basically taken that same content and dropped in Looking Glass. It took no time at all. Um, so this will just roll through this quickly. Uh, you can kind of see if you know what Looking Glass is. It's probably more meaningful. If you don't know what Looking Glass is, this looks kind of weird. Um, but essentially, we, we, one of the things we wanted to do Looking Glass is we saw a lot of demo content that was just a straight on shot. Uh, and so we wanted to do use multiple cameras and camera switching and so forth and explore the scene as because it, it's volumetric and it's 3D assets. 
and its 3D display or holographic display, um, we thought it was important to use multiple camera angles. So top down, from the side, following the ball, behind the hoop, and so on. Five more minutes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, this, uh, I'll just get you guys seen this so you can get your feeling for it. So what's next for us? Uh, we have a lot of ch uh, technical challenges still to work on. We have a lot of capture system work that we're doing next year, uh, a lot of pipeline work, uh, really getting to a more automated pipeline. Uh, but a big uh, step forward to us in 2019 is doing uh, more creative development and funding more projects. Uh, so we'll be uh, spending a lot of time looking for storytellers who have creative ideas they want to do in volumetric. Uh, we're very interested in experimenting and exploring. We want to continue to push what's possible. So we've gone from 14 seconds to four minutes. We want to get up to a 30 minute piece uh, in, in within the next uh, 12 months. Uh, so anyone who wants to do something really cool, let me know. We're very excited about doing that. We want to produce stuff that's award winning, uh, groundbreaking, generates a lot of interest, and uh, uh, doesn't have dirt, and uh, doesn't require a wraparound shot. <laughs> Thank you.